Okay, so um, I'm gonna start with I'm gonna start with um, ETH and having a look at the levels that we're gonna move between um, on Friday and Friday and moving into the weekend. Um, and we're gonna start with where we are on the daily pattern. So where we are um, right now is today was a reversal day. So we've had we've had one, two, three, four days of printing um descending candles so we've had a nice swing down and today refers to the upside um almost all the all the swing down um was was um recovered so uh, we are seeing uh, the stochastic on the day right now uh, lifted so it's no longer heading down it's it's lifted but it hasn't it hasn't yet crossed over so the trend is still down this is just the impact of today we need to we need to see we need to see continuation for this to be confirmed as a reversal that's Roy watching his jokes on TikTok um what we're seeing what we're seeing now is also price action meeting a resistance support and resistance level a daily support and resistance level at 1280 now this is a daily support and resistance level coming all the way from here from um, January 2021 so it's it's not a, um, a only a local one it is a local one we'll see it on the one hour but it is a, a long-term one as well so what we have here is we can we can we can see this as a one two three four because this hasn't broken the body of this candle so this impulse could still continue to the upside and do a five reaching the 1460 we could absolutely see that but mainly what we're seeing here is ranging along the 20 ema on the day now i i am constantly watching for confirmations because one candle breaking the 20 closing below it is great it shows that the trend started coming down and it's backed up by the breaking of the ma uh, but the second candle is the one that confirms and today we need to see this candle turn red um and 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 close below the 20 ema for the trend down to be to continue it doesn't mean that we're reversing to, reversing to the upside yet because we haven't printed yet a higher high and we haven't uh, we haven't broken out of the sideways range so by printing a higher high and moving onwards from there we would be breaking out of the sideways range and yes then the reversal would be confirmed but at the moment we don't have the reversal of the trend confirmed we just have the reversal of this swing the the local swing um, which is a four hour swing that has done a retracement now um, we're looking at the four hour levels and we can see on the four hour levels let me just switch the four hour levels the same 1280 level it is a big level across the board the four hour stochastic is up um, not at the top it still has space to go um, that we don't have at the moment uh, at the moment there is no there's a hidden bearish divergence here but again I wouldn't I wouldn't count on that I what I would count on is the breaking of the support and resistance level so um, again this was a great trade today I posted it in the uh, in the chat and I hope there were people that took it because there was um, there was a sideways channel it broke out of it and I'm telling you don't you shouldn't you shouldn't be trading without the stop loss at any time especially where we are now if you had put a limit order here uh, and a tight stop loss below it and again 10% is quite generous because it is um, a nice um, this would have required a 3% stop loss let's say you would have put a 10% it would have been threatened and there it is went up to the target was 1270 that was my next uh, support and resistance level I didn't believe it's gonna get all the way up here to back test this four hour wedge but here it was doing it it did it we have a pivot here on the divergence indicator so um, I believe from here we're gonna we're gonna come down now looking at the one hour levels moving into Friday because Friday and the weekend will be moving in this space 
I will have more information after New York is finished tomorrow. You know, New York likes to put um, either a high or a low, and it sets um, one of the edges of the um, of of the range. And together with what New York decides to do at the end of the session, we can zoom in on the specific range of that weekend. For instance, I believe we had uh, where was it? This was Saturday. That's uh, Friday. Where was Friday? Friday here. So this was the this was the range uh, for for um, for the weekend set on Friday. It it did a uh, an extension on Saturday, which was a breakout from here. And if you calculate it, if you zoom in on the fifteen minute. I'm not saying you should be trading this. I don't think you should be trading the weekends because the weekends, um, the past three weekends have been very underwhelming. This one hasn't even, it came close to the target but didn't meet it. So um, the reason why we're mapping out the range for the weekend and for Friday is to know if we are in long-term trades, what space is it going to be moving in. So it's more for the long-term trade holders, trade position holders, that want to see what what's the space that I'm gonna be moving in and you know maybe plan for some DCAs maybe plan for some taking profit whatever your however you you have your strategy planned so the space that ETH has uh, for Friday and the weekend is uh, the same sideways wedge uh, sideways sorry sideways uh, channel and I will be um, putting a path onto this. So I'm not going to take this swing into account because I generally allow the first swing to be this, the range setting swing. And then I count three touches to the top, three touches to the to the bottom. Now, um, I am in two minds about whether I should be taking the this bottom. I will just, you know what, I will remove this. And I will reset because um, I, I don't want to take this into account. This is the higher range. We have proven we have proven to be moving within the, the top range more so than the bottom one. I will be taking it into account as a as a breakout trade from the top one, but I won't be I won't be counting the swings because um, if I if I if I think about it. There was a time when ETH caught me out with uh, an extra swing that I didn't, um, I didn't look at. So um, here we are. If we're looking only at the top range, we have one, two, three touches to the top in terms of completed swings, and here we have one, two, and we need one more touch here to the bottom. Again, I cannot stress how essential it is to see this middle line get tested. If we don't, if, if um, I have two big ifs here, if this swing doesn't manage to break through to the next level at 1350, making a higher high, then we have a quadruple, we have a quadruple top here, one, two, three, four, four, four tops all on the same level. So a bit like what happened here. We had one, two, three, four, five tops here. You see what happened? It, we came down to the bottom level. This is what I believe will happen if we don't break the 1350. So what we need to see, what we need to see first is either moving up and breaking the into a higher high. Now this, I'll mark it orange because this to me is the least likely situation. I know we have a lot of crossings of the MAs, but the way it happened today, that 6% lift today uh, in a day was too fast, too furious for sustainability, in, in my opinion. Also, in terms of retracements, um, for instance, this swing, if I am to check to see how much it retraced, it's only done a 0 0.5. This one has only done a 0 0.5 as well. They're almost identical. I didn't even have to adjust the the fib and they are again hefty swings 22% ETH did 23% almost and um, without more than a 0 0.5 correction which true it indicates continuation but we must not forget that we are in a bear market and these 
rallies are very short-lived so do exercise caution when placing a long positions and short positions um, at the same time because if you had shorted for instance today here at the 55 rejection um, the 55 rejection here on the one hour you would have get you would have got caught in a um, um, in a in a trade that would have put you 60 percent in the red so when we do the short uh, we're, we're gonna do a short training session um, after the levels um, and we're gonna look at entries and exits and and the stop losses that were available entries and exits that were available this week and then the stop losses that would have kept your capital in the best position um, because I think that's very important to to keep in mind. We need to tighten up on the on the strategy, and because uh, we are going to go into areas of volatility. And uh, myself and Roy, we've made the promise of this being the last time we're we're overstaying uh, a long term trade uh, and 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 missing out on the volatility. Um, so this it's 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 essential to use the stop loss right now and take advantage of the trades that are there. Anyways, hi Lee. I was just doing uh, ETH now, um, the start and recording it, so you haven't missed anything for the moment because the same things I'm going to repeat for Bitcoin, they're quite in similar positions. The, it, the only thing that's different is the percentage. So, okay, thanks for letting me know. You're very welcome. Um, so, this top range here is um, where we are more likely to spend Friday and the weekend. Now we have news coming out tomorrow. Uh, we have the core PPI coming out, out tomorrow um, for the states. We're going to look at the S&P and we're going to look at the DXY after we do um, Bitcoin as well. And I'll, I'll show you what I showed today in the session at the start of the day. Uh, because you're you're gonna understand better what happened today if you see the pattern of the s p uh, you're gonna see how similar it was to the previous swings and i and i'm and i'm pretty sure that is the case again we can never know for sure that that is the case until it's happened but it's too it's looking textbook identical so um here we are for eth um again the most likely trades um are down towards the midline again channels i i love channels they're very they're very um how can i say not easy they are very intuitive to to trade we need to test the midline of this channel in order to have a sustainable lift of course the market makers can push it up to 1350 yes that could happen uh, this would be the the most immediate but least likely move. So we're we're closer to the thirteen fifty than we are to the eleven thirty, as you can see in distance. But if you're looking at what happened here uh, in terms of peaks, we've had one, two, three, four peaks at almost similar levels, and I think we've had four peaks here as well, four rejections, and this one couldn't break through this level. And I showed you this is a level. That's true on the day, on the four hour and on the one hour. It's essential. Uh, so again, I believe that we're going to come down. I'm not going to repeat the Fib retracements because you already know them and I've posted them, posted them, posted them so many times this week. I had a cup of tea two hours ago and I'm, and I'm hyped up on the caffeine. Um, let me see. So this would be the short trade opportunity. If we break through this level, we're coming all the way down to 1070. Again, I still hold the same position. Um, this is this is a rally. It hasn't had more than a 0 0.5 correction. It it will come down. Now the the test here is if it breaks into a higher high. If it breaks into a higher high, then we are moving up 1350 and then 1400 would be the target but we need to see that higher high happen and also we need to see in terms of trend lines um what happened today with ethereum went up to the previous trend line that it had broken out of that this wedge 
if it breaks back into it then we are looking at the top line of the wedge being touched again this doesn't mean that a breakout to the upside is imminent on the contrary it means that we have another we had the we have the third touch in the wedge to be made and there we're gonna see if we're gonna break up to the upside um, and 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 meet a, uh, a fifteen hundred dollar target again I think there has there have to be a lot of macro positive changes for that to happen I don't think there are we're talking about uh, the news being quite bleak this week um, they're talking about a recession in the states um, one of the guys I'll post the news article on on the general chat because I found it really really good uh, he was talking about uh, a 35 percent chance of being a soft landing for the states so that means it's going to be a rough landing it's going to be hard times and again I don't think the money will go into crypto for that not at the moment now we do have great uh, MAs crossing um, again as long as we haven't broken the previous high we we are not going up to the next level at 1350 if we do break the previous high that's the level to be looking at and if we're looking at the target of the of the arc would be the 1400 so for ETH the levels to keep in mind are 1180 1290 1350 here's where we're moving between at the moment we don't have a structure uh, you could place um, you could place a limit order on the 1290 line if this breaks for the upside would it be worth it absolutely it's a great uh, it's a great range well not a great a good range it's four percent it looked higher than than what it is it's a 4% range, you could place a, a very tight 10% stop loss below it and uh, see if it is going to break it. Again, a longing without a stop loss right now would be quite reckless. The same for uh, the same for the short positions. Um, so even if we, again, I would be quite confident this is going to come down, placing a... Uh, an order again somewhere along this line if it gets hit again or with a 702 but at the moment we don't have let me check if we have a 702 yes I believe we do have a 702 range so let's let's put a fib retracement not the other way around on this and a 702 and I will check with you uh, Bitcoin I checked the previous Bitcoin opportunities and Bitcoin offers more golden pockets than 702s so just to be sure we don't miss the entries I, I think a golden pocket entry is much more reliable than a 702 um, for Ethereum and Bitcoin we're gonna we're gonna uh, check statistically which which of them are for XRP I go for the 702 because I know XRP does the 786 but um, Bitcoin and Ethereum do the 702 and the 786 um, equally now if you put a stop if you put a stop loss above the previous high here it would be a 5% stop loss let's say you want to be more generous and bring it up above the previous two peaks that would be a little bit higher I don't think that would be worth it no I wouldn't I wouldn't place it there because that would be a 15% with a trade with a trade of 40 it's less than 3 to 1 ratio the ideal ratio that I like to practice is 3 to 1 but again traders look for a 2 to 1 as well I'm more on the on the cautious side um, I, I like for instance for a 40% for a 10% a stop loss but that would be technically where you would be in a safer position with your stop loss. Um, yeah, I would just I would just be uh, mindful of placing the stop loss above the previous high from the golden po pocket above the previous high a six percent and doing two entries at fourteen percent two entries, watching it and if it breaks up let it break up it will do a retrace put the 702 there and continue from there so you a short a tighter stop losses give you the chance to do more entries more entries uh, with sometimes less of a cost than uh, a higher stop loss if if you get stop lost out and this this works financially this works um, I've kept I've kept track 
track of that and it takes about two trades to offset I've had five or six stop losses of about six percent between six and eight percent uh, and those were uh, the, when when I monitored this stop loss strategy it was be between a very in a very choppy sideways range between Friday and Sunday. So I traded for the whole three days or the whole choppiness where where is the hardest to trade. And I did about um, nine trades then and I believe the final three trades that I caught offset the whole loss and they gave me about a 1.2x profit that for the for those three days. Uh, so it is worth it. You can you can trust me on that. If you are tight on your stop losses and you don't move them and you keep them where they are, they will uh, they will work for you. Um, now, you've just given me. I just had a, a a challenge for next week. I think I'm gonna do that. I think I'm gonna map all the 702s or the golden pockets entries for Ethereum and Bitcoin, and we're gonna see where we get stop lost out. Um, and how much that would cost? Yeah, that would be that would be a great monitoring uh, exercise for me because I am waiting right now in a trade and I'm looking for exercises, trading exercises to do. Okay, um, so long story short, because it's a short it's a, it's a short session tonight. I, I'm not going to keep you for long. Uh, Ethereum is moving; is still ranging sideways. The daily proves that it's still ranging sideways. Yes, we've broken above the twenty. We're probably going to close above the 20 EMA. That doesn't mean that we've gone bullish. We need to see two days close above the 20 and we need to see the previous high get broken and we need to see continuation with conviction from that level. Otherwise, we're still ranging sideways. No change. And it's normal to see the stochastic and the regular RSI turn up. Now, for Bitcoin, we have the same thing when it comes to uh, the daily 20. Look at how uh, over um, overextended in the overbought it is. Roy pointed it out to me earlier today that it's been up there for 15 days. And the previous times that had happened, there were they were big drops. Um, one of them from, I'll show you where. So this one was... No, it was here in October. Yes, this one here in October where it happened for that stretch of time, it was a drop from the all time high. So um, it, it's gonna, it's this, this um, overbought stochastic RSI will need to reset. Again, I haven't closed my short, I haven't taken profit, there was no significant profit to be, to be taken. And I, I think this is, again, it's moving very very similarly to the previous drops could we still be in this for a while yes we could unfortunately uh, I, I I don't I'm not a huge fan of how we closed above this um, divergence line it could go up to the 55 EMA on the daily come down that would be the space that it would be moving in and that would be from the 18 to the 16.5 range on the day I've readjusted the sideways channel um, that Bitcoin has been moving between uh, because we had this peak here. This looks like a beautiful head and shoulders um, to me at the moment. Again, just like with Ethereum, if we don't break the previous high, chances are we're going to come down. The, uh, the target of the arc is 18k and if I am to probably put, let's say, um, measure this channel and see what its target is. It's not it's not 18k. It's halfway there, but you know how momentum continues. I believe that we do have the chance to to reach the 18k. It would be the next level if we continue upward. Now again, channels. I love channels. My favorite patterns. I know I shouldn't have pat favorite patterns, but channels are just so beautiful to to trade. One, two three touches to the top, one, two, we need another touch here to the bottom. And again, they're very psychological. It's like we've tried three times, we're going to come down here, probably it's going to break down. And it's going to do the correction that we're waiting for this to do. And that's where I was waiting to take profit. That's why I haven't still taken profit because we are, 
we have only done a not even a 0 0.5 but i'm going to consider this a 0 0.5 because it is quite close to the 0 0.5 um double bottom situation here uh, but it was a huge again a, a big lift without a significant correction not very sustainable I've, I've been saying this all week so again we are in the same same range that we've we've been mapping for the past month um yeah 11th of november i can't believe how time flies um so here we are i'm gonna map this i'm gonna move this a little bit lower there we go uh does it make any difference no it doesn't so i'm gonna keep it i'm gonna keep it where it was okay so we if if we're looking at this range um again no do you know what I'm, i am gonna move this lower here i'm gonna overlay it uh, to this white line because um I want to see how many swings we have. Again, ETH, I'm, I am inspired by a moment when I was caught out in ETH um, ages ago. Uh, I, I hadn't counted, I hadn't counted one swing uh, because I thought that the range was higher. And I, from then onwards, I'm like, no, make the, make the range narrower. And it's, it's better to, to overcount the swings than to, undercount them because then you'll be underestimating the breakout when it happens so um i'm i'm keeping the space a little bit tighter now on the on on the range i'm gonna post this new range because it we are uh, we're we are out of it at the moment so if i don't take this swing into account we have one two three four five we still need a final drop I believe we need a final drop, a final retest of the 15,800. And I believe it's better for uh, short positions to have made another peak here rather than come down and double bottom there and then continue from there onwards. I think it's better that, that we reset our stochastics here after this little drop than here after a bigger drop because a bigger drop means bigger power to lift higher so after this drop i would have expected maybe a 17.5 would have been less profit to take here on the midline on the red line but now i am expecting this to go all the way down because we've had this triple top um triple top scenario again just like with ethereum i'm sorry guys my 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 speaking skills have just dropped dramatically i'm repeating myself a lot i'll, I'll slow down and be more expressive uh, just like with ethereum the immediate immediate um action would be to reach up higher to break the previous high and reach up to the 18k area that would be the most immediate action is it the most likely i don't think so um we have broken here inside the this uh for our rsi channel but we are still printing rsi divergences to a bearish direction on the four hour so these peaks are almost at the same level whereas the rsi is dropping dramatically on the four hour um, so I believe we are going to come down and it's going to be a great time here on the 15.8 range to take profit. I was looking at liquidity liquidity this uh, earlier today when before this lift happened was telling Roy Bitcoin has more liquidity around 17.2 and and 17.4 than the 16.2 level that I expected it to go to. And it proved out to 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 be true. And it was also showed in in on the fifteen minute entries, so it wasn't it wasn't out of the blue. So what we have here, what we have here is we're keeping the same. Again, it, we're more likely to move between the midline and the top line over the Friday and the weekend, and then maybe on Monday break out of this towards the bottom. Not unless the Friday finishes with an explosive move to the downside, in which case the, the Saturday will continue it. I will keep you up to date at the end of the Friday 
New York session you've seen that it, we haven't had too many updates uh, during the sessions, um, but I, I, I do like to update you at the end of the session to see where we are and if something has happened. So that's that's what I think we need to keep in mind, you know, to prepare for the start of the sessions and then to, to reflect at the end of the session. So that's that's it for for Bitcoin. The big numbers are 17.2. If that's if this level where we are right here is turned into support, 18k is the next one. Then the midline at um, I'm gonna move this to the midline, 16, 16 2, 16. Well, 16.3 on my chart. Um, 16, even 16.4. 16.4. I'm a little bit more generous than the liquidity pool. 16.4 and then 15.8 for the bottom level. We haven't, again, we haven't broken out of this range. The 18K and the 13, the 18K for Bitcoin and the 13 let me show you here. There. The 18K and the 1354 Ethereum are part of their range. That's what we need to keep in mind. So after after those two levels break, then we're talking about breakout and reversals on the daily and the four hourly time frames. But until those levels break, we are still in the same space. We are still moving in 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 consolidation we are still ranging sideways of course keeping within the, these ranges will keep us up and down along the 20 ema so nothing that will be confirmed with the 20 ema on the daily okay now that's that's what i wanted to tell you about the levels i'll post the updates in the morning um what i what i wanted to to show you in terms of um, daily patterns is the SMP and what happened on the SMP two days ago and where we are today compared to what happened in the previous swings and now this is this is quite important for the uh, crossings of the EMAs the 5 and the 13 and I'm using them uh, because I have them on traders reality and they're really reliable on this daily time frame for the previous drops so I'm going to take all one, two, three previous peaks with the crossings of the five over the 13. Five crossing down over the 13. Five crossing down over the 13. Five crossing down over the 13. Now, a five cross down, the drop happened, and then there was a bottoming out and a lift. There was some sideways for one, two, three, even four days within that, uh, within, I wouldn't say that range, but around the range of a drop, of the drop. Uh, here, the same thing. So the, the crossing happened, it dropped, and then it stayed, it stayed ranging sideways for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days, did another lift, and then came crashing down. Here, the crossing happened, it dropped, it stayed there for one, two days, ranging sideways, it even went up high to recover the previous vector, and then crashed. Three times out of four, we had sideways, a little lift, and then a drop. So why would I think that now things are gonna be different? Again, as a trader, I, t I take the probability there is no certainty and if i am comparing patterns and i see that three times out of four this is what happened of course i'm going to think that it's going to happen in the same way now another thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to protect my capital whichever direction i'm i'm um, i'm trading because i know it could spike up it could do that the final lift before the drop so i don't want to get caught in 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 that um in 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 that lift if i'm shorting and on the contrary i don't want to get caught in that long if i if i'm longing and it starts moving down fa fast and furious so what we're seeing now is these ma's crossing and they will be probably they will there will be the same kind of pattern we'll have some sideways we'll have a lift and then we're going to have a drop. We have to see what's going to happen tomorrow and then next week in terms of the news. 
this whole volatility here in the previous patterns is perfectly justified in the macro context that we'll be moving into next week. Next week we have news on Tuesday, the CPI, Wednesday, the FOMC, Thursday, the core retail sales, retail sales uh, and unemployment claims. So we have three days. The Wednesday the FOMC is the biggest. So we have three days where where I'm expecting very high volatility. So where where was I here? These days of spikes up, spikes down, spikes up, spikes down are coming here in the pattern with the crossing of the MAs along this trend line of the wedge, along the 200 EMA. It's same, same, but different. So again, we haven't broken out of this wedge with the S&P. We're in the overflow area. We've broken below the 200 EMA on the daily. We haven't gained it back. We have the five crossing over the 13. We're not back above any of them. Yes, we have the day coming down. Uh, on the stochastic but look at the look at the space it stayed up and around the um, overbought area without a reset to the bottom of course these there needs to be a balance there needs to be a balance you look how long it stayed up how long it stayed down same if if you look back again it's the, it's the beautiful balance of the market anyways that's, that's a pattern that I wanted you to see and it's easy to, to compare this pattern. Just put on the trader's reality indicator and you'll see the 200 EMA. The data window, it took me a while to do the data window. Uh, so the data window shows you the EMAs and they're color coded and uh, it's easy to, to, to see what, what they are. And again, the 5 and the 13 are great EMAs to be watching for, for immediate action of the trend. And Again, it's a it's a daily immediate action, so that means it's gonna take three, four, five days for that to play out. It's not an, an hourly EMA crossing. So, um, am I expecting a re uh, um, a correction of the S and P? Absolutely, can go up and spike again at the two hundred EMA. Yes, it can. Um, Again, it would be uh, it hasn't reached a 50 MA, and I think that would be one of our supports. The white line here would be one of our supports. There is more movement downwards, um, but we have to be careful how we trade it because there will be volatility with the news coming and with the levels that we are in. They're not big ranges. We again, even even if we had to wait for a trade to complete, they're not they're not massive ranges this range today was six percent uh, range for ethereum and for bitcoin it was four percent so even if you shorted here you would be about 30 percent in the red now it's not the it's not the end of the world but again keep your freedom and a free cap your free capital to to be trading this let's have a look at the dxy I find it easier to to chart and to talk about the the, the S and P because it's um, it's it, again the 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 assets are a little bit more. How can I say? They're, they're less parabolic, less hectic. They go up and down, whereas the DXY has this massive parabolic swing. It's dropped out of it, and now uh, it should be coming up and testing the Bollinger on the. I'm going to switch off the trader's reality because I'm I'm going to need the Bollinger now. It's going to come up and test the 20 on the Bollinger before, uh, on the day, before dropping further. So the daily is coming up. We have a lot of bullish divergences here. We seem to have finally uh, to be finally printing a. Uh, low a higher low here on this daily swing it would be good to see that and then we'll have found some support but again the dxy is a lot more chaotic to me um, i i've called it right a lot of times but i've called it also wrong a lot of times because it has a, a rhythm that i 
I'm, I'm, I, I can't be, I can't chart at the moment so, so well as the S, SPX. Anyways, um, here, here we have a whole range of bullish divergences on the four hour. On the four hour, we've hit the bottom so many times, so many times here without uh, going to the top. But yes, we are coming from, and that's where, that's where I, um, I find the SPX a little bit more uh, re uh, relatable because we're coming from a parabolic stage. So, in this parabolic, after this parabolic stage, the drop should be somehow staged and staggered. The way the parabolic stage came up, this is the way the drop should happen: coming up and then moving down a little bit lower, coming up and then moving down a little bit lower. So, the same parabolic um, um, rhythm would be on on the way down. It would be a reverse parabolic rhythm. So um, what I'm trying to say is we seem to have found some some support, some support, at least the bottoming out of the uh, RSIs and the 4-hour. But we're not yet, uh, the, by support I mean the, the Bollinger has caught the 4-hour. Has the Bollinger caught the day? I believe it has. Yes, it has here. So... We need to see. We need to see it get back into this range box. We need to see the four-hour head up, and we need to see it for once um, going up to the top of the Bollinger on the daily. If, if that's where I'm expecting it to go, but at least minimally the twenty on the daily, a uh, twenty, which would be the midline of the Bollinger. So that would be that would be the um, that would be the talk. Uh, hmm, about the the DXY and and the SMP, I believe the SMP point that I, I was showing you the crossing of the of the EMAs on the daily and the pattern that's followed that followed with the uh, sideways and the lift is the one that we need to keep in mind. And again, if you're in a long term short position, keep your cool because this is just a rally in the bear market. It's not a bull market. It's just a rally, and it will be short lived. It's already lasting longer than usual but it, we still need those swings in the sideways channels the swings are not complete now speaking about swings uh, i'm gonna do um, the swings that we've had this week for ethereum and bitcoin to check for entries and exits on the trades it's sort of like a post uh, it's i'm gonna be looking at the one hour time frame because these are the, the trades that I would normally uh, be making um, if I weren't in a long term short. So I would be looking at the one hour time frame and I would be looking at the entries and exits. So one of them one of them would have been, for instance, um, I'm gonna start with um, with Bitcoin. And I'm gonna I'm gonna put the 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 fib retracements because I'm I'm doing limit orders now and I'm doing stop losses so I need to have a, a, the best entry. So if I put a um, an entry on the golden pocket, so not the 702 because Bitcoin likes its um, uh, golden pockets more. If I put an entry on the golden pocket and a um, uh, <clears throat> come on words. A stop loss on the uh, previous above the previous high that would be a five percent stop loss. And I'm going to be marking all the stop losses so that you see that it, it does pay off no matter how how tight the range is. So that would be a five percent stop loss. Of course, because I we see the spike, I get stop lost out. So I'm going to mark this in red as a loss. Then I'm going to let this play on again these are a 50, I'm going to I'm going to take the 15 minute swings and I'm not going to be looking at the RSIs or the 3 S's I'm just going to do entries and exits on the 15 minute because we're doing one hour trades then I'm going to let this play out it comes down I'm going to take again this swing and I'm going to put a there we go perfect now this was an exaggerated wick uh, Usually, I would put the golden pocket, but I see that there's a there's a pretty strong trend line on the 0 0.5. Here, I would put it on the 0 0.5 because it's it, it's um, it is too strong not not to put it here. So, when you have a trend line that's very strong um, like this, put it on the trend line. It has one, two, three, four wicks on it. Put it there on the trend line 0 0.5. 
how big would it be the stop loss from this trend line up above this one this would be uh, 11 percent okay let's say we're going we're trading we're trading as much as we can 11 percent this is not this does not spike me out so I'm um, uh, just a second not green because green is my gains this is white because it's not taken away from me now where do I take profit I have this line here let's say I don't take profit here I have my limit order stubbornly on the white line though I would have it a little bit higher and from this limit order down to here again I'll, I'll be very conservative let's say you're waiting for a drop a bigger drop down but you are taking this support and resistance line it would be 15 percent tiny range but bear with me because if we if we do these these are limit orders they can go in when we're sleeping our capital is protected by the stop loss doesn't matter if it's 15 or 20 percent uh we're we're taking the, the gains because they're there and we're ranging sideways, so why not take this? Okay, then um, again for the for the entries and to place the orders, we need to be awake to see this drop and the lift. We need to see where the support and resistance are. But if we uh, if we once we've placed them, we can go to sleep. And this was I think this was yeah, this was five uh, five o'clock. My time sorry three o'clock uh, uk time so it's the start of new york it's we're 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 up most of us are up then and there but you would have had only to to see this and you would have only needed this trend line to place this 15 percent uh stop loss a uh, stop loss um or uh, short position now let's do uh we are ranging so we're trading up and down in this range uh we see this swing going up we're waiting for its retracement we're placing we're putting the fib on it again we're going for a seven uh, a golden pocket rather than a 702 though i would put it here uh, around the trend line of course but let's say you're putting it on the golden pocket here it is it goes into it goes in with the next swing here or here this or this both of them catch your entry and I'm gonna I have to let me just make this screen a little bit higher a little bit bigger so I wanna again I am measuring from the golden pocket rather than the 702 because Bitcoin has more golden pockets and I know I'm doing this uh, again in hindsight the more you see patterns in hindsight the more you tell your mind you train your mind to notice them in advance so and also the more you see how how this can can work for you and you don't have to watch the trades so this would be the entry and my stop loss here would be uh, below the previous low so below this one and it would be a 4% stop loss let's see we're gonna put it there 4% okay now I'm going to put it in red and the reason why I'm putting it in red is let again let's say I have my target because we're ranging we're doing from bottom to the top from the top to the bottom let's say I have my target somewhere around here this swing comes up here and it doesn't meet my target because and it spikes me out so I lose I lose this four percent that's okay I'm gonna put another another uh, entry in oh, the other way around from here to where it reverses again here I would be taking the trend line but look the trend line and the golden pocket are all um, no this one is a 382 a 382 okay so let's say here you wouldn't put it here you would you would put it here on the golden pocket and the trend line so that means this trade 
wouldn't go in until here. So here is where you would go into the trade. And yes, you would be missing this swing. Could you be catch? So this short, this short wouldn't, this short wouldn't be valid. You wouldn't be here if you were to put a not a short sorry a long here it wouldn't it would hit your target before doing anything so you would cancel it here so no gains here no gains no losses now here you would have a short possibility let's say you didn't catch that top of the line super sweet entry point now this one does that one? no it doesn't it gives you only a 0 0.5 not even a double top sure you could be smart about it and put it on the trend line but again we're doing things more in a more structured way like we need to have a structure for for the entries and the exits and i believe here you would have your three yeses for the 15 minute entries but again we're doing only the seven uh, the the golden pocket retracements now let's see if this big swing here gives us a golden pocket or 702 entry Okay, from here to here, I'm going on the golden pocket. Let's say, now again, guys, here I would be putting it on this line because it's range trading. But let's say I, I'll put it as close to the next fib level, the 702. How much would the, uh, for this long? How much would it be? It would be 3%. I'm not stop lost out here because it doesn't go below. Again, I'm doing all the all the trades based exclusively on this very simple strategy, just ranging and catching the sev the 702, the golden pocket, the 05 entries along that range. I would be taking my profits here. Of course, it is the range, and again, this would be a super beautiful trade. Again, 15%. It's, it's all that the range is offering. It's all that the range is offering. Now, here is where it would get really, really messy. Now, I'm going to be very patient, and I'm going to calculate this to the best of my ability. <laughs> my mathematics is right now on fire. Um, so here is where I see the range being hit. I see rejection. I put a 702. I've been caught in this. I've done this when I was monitoring that choppy action. So I know, I know it can, this can be the most frustrating part of trading this range. Here we would put it on, let's say the, the golden pocket. You want to put it on the golden pocket. Uh, the stop loss here would be 3%. And you would be stop lost out because it keeps going. But I, I want to show you, I want to show you that when you catch it, how 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 it's worth it in in terms of profits and of course strategy. So here, you would be stop lost out. You you do the same for the next swing because you think okay, let's say you're not looking at this peak. I would be looking at that peak and say okay, it, we're going all the way up there. But let's say you're not looking at that because you're you're trying to take every single trade. You're trying to take every single turn. You're putting a stop loss here. You're putting a fib here. This would be your entry point. Your stop loss would be a little bit uh, above this previous one. Again, another 3%. Okay. Again, your stop loss out. Then you catch, then, then here your stop loss out. You try to catch the next one. I'm going to I'm going to do all the swings. I'm I'm super patient. Super patient because I know how important it is to really really see it and really really get it. And again, 
I'm going for the most convenient golden point, golden pocket. This one is 1.5%. And this is the most frust this is when a lot of traders give up and say, darn it, sugar, uh, this is bad, I'm losing, I'm losing, look, I've lost one, two, three. Yes, you've lost percentages, not even 10% yet. And here it is. Here is the magic. Here is where... No, not yet. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Wait a second. One more. We've got one more swing to go. Here we would have the entry point here, and the stop loss would be 3%. And again, we have four losing trades. Remember, we've had... And we're, I'm going to count all of these. And here is where the magic happens. You go on the golden pocket, look right on the golden pocket. I measured a couple of swings for Bitcoin today and I noticed the golden pocket was the most profitable one. You put your stop loss above here, 30%. How comfortable will you be fe would you be feeling putting a 3% stop loss? Very comfortable. And that is risk management. And uh, I, uh, again, it, we don't need courage as a trader to do a trade. Courage is not what's required. It's trade. It's risk management that is required. With proper risk management, there is no need for courage. And again, there won't be stress because it's a 3%. Now, you catch this swing all the way from up here down to here. And you get a 30% win. Again, I know the wins are nothing to write home about. But they are maximizing this messiness and craziness. They are ma in in this chop. You can still sorry. I want to put it in green because we need to we need to make this we need to make we need to make this a, a profitable activity. Now here we have again. Uh, I'll I'll finish I'll finish this off with the final with the final swing here. Or do you know what? For the sake of completion, because I am a completionist, not a perfectionist, but a completionist, I need to finish this. I'm going to put this uh, on the down this way. Let's see if I have a golden pocket entry here. Do I have a golden pocket entry here for one more swing? I do, I do, and it's not. Yes, very good. So I have one more golden pocket entry here with a stop loss of, I think this would be a heftier stop loss, a 5.5% stop loss, but it wouldn't be stop lost out. So I, I put my trade here and I wait patiently. I say, okay, that's my golden pocket entry. That would be a, uh, let's say a 6% stop loss. I, it, I wouldn't get stop loss out. I wouldn't lose it. How much money would I make? It, it's getting close to my target. I think I would hit that. It's giving me even a, a, a it's given, it's even giving me a um, double top. So I would be taking profits here, thirteen percent. Okay, I'll put down twelve percent. There we go. Uh, here at this double top for sure again this is a swing this this knocks me out how about the, the next this swing doesn't give me anything because I don't think it gives me a uh, it doesn't give me a 702 golden pocket retracement here let me just double check because I might be I might be in the wrong here No, it doesn't. It just gives me a, a three, um, a, a three eight two. But again, here I could enter on the back test of the twenty if I really want. Let's say I lose this one. I don't take a trade there. Um, again, I will be trying to catch a. Sh uh, I would be trying to catch along here on this. This would be very choppy, super choppy. However, you would be losing one trade here. Here is the end. Here, here would be the entry point. Here would be the stop loss, and you would be losing um, 
but bear with me because this would be the final one. 2%, let's say 2.5. I know. Why, why, what am I doing? Stop, stop, go away. Okay, this one. 2.5, uh, 2.5 is lost here. It's in the red. But the next swing is yours. It's all yours. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. There we go. And again, here you would be. You. Uh, it, where Where does it give you the golden pocket? Does it give? Ah, wait a second. Because it goes all the. It's not that. Big. It's it's this. There it is. That's that's where I generally make the mistake. Because no. No, this doesn't give you this doesn't give you a golden pocket. Um, it gives you a golden pocket here on this on the next swing, because it's 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 just terrible sideways. But it does give you a golden pocket here, and if you put a um, so it, it gives you here a golden pocket. It gives you here a golden pocket. Here a golden pocket. Any golden pocket that you ha would have taken along this line does not break this low. It is magical. So yes, it would have been a, a long wait. It would be a 3% uh, stop loss. And again, it wouldn't be taken away from you. And again, you would be making, and I'm just, I'm just talking about the regular range. I'm not going, up, I'm just going to the green line because if you are range trading, Rage trading is, n is not glorious, but it's very profitable. It's 18%. Uh, Sorry, it's a little bit higher because you're starting somewhere around here. But I'll, again, I'll put it at, I'll put it at 18%. So, we have missed a couple of, of opportunities along the way because of how this uh, chop happened, how, how the sideways went, especially at these peaks here and these retracements here, these abrupt ups and downs. But there were plenty of uh, chances in the meantime. Uh, we've lost um, one, two, th uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stop losses. Um, Four of them were not uh, were not taken. We have lost in terms of profit. Five plus four is nine. Um, ten, ten point five, twenty two point five here. Twenty twenty four point five. That is my mathematics is is it really shines when I'm counting money guys that's that's my super skill so 24.5 lost in percentages how much did we make in gains 30 12 plus um, 18 30 60 percent 15 plus 15 90 percent 90 percent so we made 90 percent we lost 24.5 that is a three to one success ratio i think any trader on this planet would be <coughs> incredibly satisfied with a three to one success ratio you cannot get more precise than this yes you need to be watching price action but you don't need to put yourself under stress to watch price action to watch all the, all the other indicators and yes i am watching all the other indicators not just putting limit orders and then closing the laptop and not not looking i am watching for the right things to happen but especially in this kind of chop especially when you have a moment of crisis like here five unsuccessful trades and i've had that i needed to go through that but with the small stop losses it really works out and it really pays off and that's why i did it and we're going to do it on the trades that we have uh, on the swings that we have on right now i am assuming they're ranging and if they're not 
I will lose only my 5% or my 6% max, let's say 10% max stop loss. That's all I'm risking. My biggest stop loss here that I risk was 11% because of, 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 this, of, this, um, of this deep correction. It had a deep correction to swing and that's why it had that, um, that big um, stop loss. So for Bitcoin and Ethereum, you can go with a golden pocket. You can go with a 0 0.5 wherever the retracement is around your support and resistance line. You still need your MAs. You still need your support and resistance line for TA because they will help you zoom in on that entry point when you put in that limit order. But once you get used to it, you will see it everywhere. And you can do the kind of, it would be great for you to do the kind of um, exercise that I did tonight so that you see them everywhere. You train your mind to see them because most often this is the kind of action price action that we're in. Bigger range, depending on the coin, but, um, sorry, my phone went there. Um, bigger range, depending on the coin, but still um, we need a strategy that, that has a, a great success rate. And this one to me, again, in a, in a, in a, in a 1.5% range, let me just measure it again one more time, 1.8. 1 1.8% 1 range, making 90%, which means four times the percent range and losing 24.5 is great. It's wonderful. Now, I wouldn't do all these trades because maybe I wouldn't be awake for all those trades, but uh, you've lost 24%. Let's say you only do half of the winning trades. It's still 40%. That means you still covered all of your losses and ended the week with 24.5%. And 24.5% profit on your investment is huge. So that's, that's what I wanted to show you. The entries and the exits on the range. And again, for the, for the exits, you can use the retracements down. I use my, my support and resistance lines because... I know I can count on them. I've seen them work. Um, you can use the trader's reality daily levels for your taking profits as long as you don't miss putting a take profit or a stop loss with every trade that you put in. Once we go into a range, it's a great strategy. Um, now, what, I, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put in a, a mock trade here. For both Ethereum and um, and uh, Bitcoin, a short, of course, because we are still ranging. I, I again, I believe that we will be um, coming down. Did it hit? Oh. Ah, no. But wait a second. Yeah. Okay. So let's say we missed that one. Okay, now, so uh, this one, we wouldn't catch this, would we catch, we would catch the 0 0.5, that's, a, that's, that's why Bitcoin is, see, I, for, for, I find myself first time saying Bitcoin is harder to trade than XRP, <laughs> because it's not so regular with this uh, 702 retracement. Um, now, here I would put it, uh, here I would put it on this line, because I don't have, I don't have a uh, retracement level. I would just do support and resistance. Here would be the entry. A little bit above. There we go. Uh, stop loss. So uh, the stop loss would be above the previous high, above above this one, and it would be a 5% stop loss. So I would go to bed. I'm going to mark it orange because it's our current one. 5% stop loss here. Going to remove this, and of course my target for this one because I, again I am ranging. My target would be down, down, down to here. I wouldn't if I'm going to bed. I wouldn't be going uh, to bed with the longer term target because um, the uh, I want to. I, I can't watch to see how it meets it. So I'm gonna choose the more immediate target, and I've I, I, I've done super trades with Bitcoin, and I won 
20 30% sorry I got 20 30% overnight so that would be 17 17% 5 5% 5 stop loss with 7 17% um, profit it's worth it so that would be the trade today and we had a trade uh, yeah we had a trade today for ethereum um, I'm gonna do the same for ethereum I'm gonna put a let me see um, if we have it here I think it started coming down without the retracement So here would be the uh, retracement and the entry for Ethereum would be up around, uh, let's say here, the golden pocket because it looks like, no, it doesn't look like it's going to come down, to be honest. I'm going to put one here. Ethereum is always a little bit harder to, um, it has those choppy sideways before coming down, similar to XRP. So I will put a, an entry here on the golden pocket. I would put a, a short um, tight stop loss. It would be a 5.5%. And of course, my target would be, I'll remove this. Oh. I'll remove this. And my target would be the uh, next support and resistance line. From here down to here, it would be um, about 30%. Again, that I would make in my while I'm sleeping. There we go. Here to the next support and resistance line. So this would be my uh, my entry point for uh, here. It would be my entry point for a short in Ethereum, following it down. Um, now I would put two orders here just in case it doesn't go up to there. Uh, if it breaks this line, if it breaks this line, but only with now. If I were to put a a stop loss to this it would be a quite a hefty it would be 20% compared to the 30% less than it would be half and half so I wouldn't put the stop loss that uh, that high I would just put a 10% max stop loss no sorry let me just calculate how much the profit would be here it would be 2.48% uh, so I would put an 8% stop loss uh, around here so I would give it I would give it a little bit of space but not too much 8% so in case the golden pocket doesn't go through the support and resistance with a tight stop loss it makes me 24% profit so that would be the um, that would be the, um, the the two trades that I would have in as limit orders whichever one goes first Happy days. Because uh, now if both of them go in, if both of them go in, uh, they would be adding positions. So these positions would be correlated and you would be having an entry point somewhere in the middle. Um, but uh, again, that's very unlikely I think one or the other I've never had two two well I yeah never had two positions correlate like that um, but yeah in case this one doesn't go through this one will go through and the stop loss would be on average again because you you would have your positions uh, put together so that would be an average of six percent six seven percent still worth it for the 30% uh, gain that you would be making. So again, these are simple gains to be made. Uh, you move up and down with the range as it moves up and down. Um, and again, you don't need to be watching every single trade, every single indicator. 
you can just be watching the 15 minute swings because those are the one hour trades that you are making. Now, that is it for me for today. It was. Uh